Welcome back. Our top story this half an hour, AI and healthcare. As part of my one-hour AI special airing tomorrow night right here on Fox Business, I sat down with IBM CEO Jeannie Rometty about her company's investment in healthcare and artificial intelligence. We've been a big investor in healthcare and a real believer. This is a long road, but this is one of the industries so badly in need of AI. It is difficult for a doctor, the amount of data. And so we've been working away on Watson for Health, and in particular, we worked on oncology. It was one of the early things we started on. We're now at 300 hospitals and over 125,000 patients around the world where the AI has helped the doctor identify the diagnosis and the appropriate treatment. These are things that you didn't realize before how either infrequently they were done or not done with precision. My next guests are making major investments in the field. The Sandy Weil Family Foundation is teaming up with the U.S. Department of Energy to invest in AI technology to advance biomedical research. And joining me right now are the principals, Energy Secretary Rick Perry and former Citigroup Chairman and CEO Sandy Weil. It's great to have you both here. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, and Sandy, I know we go back a long time. You have a history of, uh, of donating, giving back to healthcare institutions. Thank you for a lifetime of doing that, number one. Number two, Secretary, what, tell us about this partnership. You're a sitting energy secretary, and you're trying to do a public-private partnership here. Yeah, what we found uh, a couple of years ago is that uh, we were in about third place on the supercomputers, and the administration made the uh, commitment that that's not good enough. Whoever gets to quantum computing first wins. And so this administration now has increased funding by 45% on our supercomputers. And... I was out at the University of California, San Francisco, again, where Sandy's been a great and uh, extraordinary uh, benefactor from the standpoint of uh, the, the university's neuroscience school. And it started making some sense that we would be able to have a public-private partnership with the Will Family Foundation and the DOE and to be able to work together to create a focus on, in this case, mental health traumatic brain injury, concussions, wow. CTE, all of those issues, and we're finding some great answers to questions that we just didn't have the computing this capacity to, uh, to answer Such beforehand. an important point that you're making because for so many years, we donated and put a lot of time, money, and energy into things like heart disease. We figured out that, you know, eating poorly can cause diabetes, and then we started to change our behavior. We figured out that smoking causes cancer. We started to change our, our behavior. We don't know enough about the brain. Yeah. And, and to focus on the brain is really important. Sandy, this has been something that's been important for you for years. I know what you've sure. done you're just here in New York at New York uh, Presbyterian Hospital. Tell us what you're trying to do. I think what, we, what we're trying to do, and I think what we will do working with the Department of Energy, is to be able to look at a thousand times more information in a very short period of time so that the information is really important to the doctors. They're seeing it in real time rather than weeks later when it, where it's not nearly as valuable. And also, I think, you know, I think quantum computing is going to be important in all different areas, whether it's energy or, or health care or, or really being able to examine yeah. what, what the issues are and being able to go through and a lot more. Predictive modeling, you know, we're having a big getting ahead, Getting ahead of it and coming up with a prediction on, on things. On climate, uh, this is a great example of where real science can come in and help us make some additions. Earthquake predictivity. I mean, the idea that we're going to be able to do these predictive modelings, we're going to be predictive modeling on the brain. If this event happens, here's what you can expect to happen. Uh, for instance, we're seeing some great uh, work being done on traumatic brain injury. Again, because of what Sandy and his foundation is doing out at UCSF in, in California with uh, Dr. Jeffrey Manley. He's come up with a device, Maria. Wow. Take a drop of your blood. Yeah. Uh, and even if the MRI does not show a concussion, he can tell definitively whether or not you've been concussed. That's life-changing stuff. Sure and is. that is now done with a partnership with UCSF, Dr. Manley, and Abbott Laboratories. That's the type of cutting-edge technology that's going to come out of this artificial intelligence effort. It makes complete sense for DOE to be involved in this effort because the supercomputers Four of the fastest supercomputers of the world belong to the Department of Energy. I get it. I get it. Okay, so in my special, I spoke with Bill Joy, who back in 1999, going into 2000, wrote an article for Wired magazine, and the title of the article was, 
why the future does not need us, <laughs> talking about artificial intelligence. Now, he also said in the special that the machine can look at a million eyes and in milliseconds understand which one of the eyes are actually diseased. So I ask you, <laughs> what can be done in terms of getting ahead of disease, saving people's lives, I think, is, is where you're going with this. And secondly, what about those people who are worried about this, that a doctor is going to be replaced with a machine, that their jobs are going to go away? Yeah. There, w there will be some jobs that go away, but like all things, and this is like an autonomous revolution that we're participating new in. New jobs will be created. New jobs will be created. The standard of living will become better. It's like the buggy will... whip manufacturer back in the uh, turn of the... Nine, uh, the 20th century. Well, even, Who's going to take his place? Well, even, even right, when you look at 1999, I mean, we didn't know half the jobs that are very good jobs today. Yeah. We didn't know about coders. We didn't know about people who are organizing and mining data. You know, there were new jobs created from the digital revolution as well. Right, correct. Yeah. Human beings are still going to be very much at the epicenter of all the new innovation, the new technology. But what should people and, know to arm themselves with the right information so that they're not out of a job and out of a career? Yeah, I think they ought to be excited about the potential changes that are out there. I mean, for me, that's what this is. I mean, this is an exciting time. This is about American innovation and American technology. Nobody else is going to do this the way that we will. And I can promise you that the potential for new jobs, but new places for you in your health. I mean, when you think about uh, the challenges that have plagued us, whether it's cancer, I'll, uh, again, with great confidence say that artificial intelligence in the cure for cancer, it's in there somewhere and it's going to be faster than what we think because these computers are changing exponentially the speed of which we are working together. So all of government is working together on this. We're, we're focused in on the Department of Energy as the place where AI because of the computers. But we got a partnership with the VA, a million veterans program, where we got a million veterans volunteering to give a, a sample of their blood. Yeah. When we go back in, and then we can tell this massive amount of information about them. Veterans, they're out. They've done their duty. Yeah. But we're going to tell them, you got a real project or a real possibility of prostate cancer. You've got Unbelievable. Uh, a breast cancer opportunity. Well, one of the interviews happen. in my piece was this woman, Regina Barzilay from, uh, from MIT. Mm -hmm. And she had breast cancer. She was a survivor. But now she has come up with an AI-powered system that can predict breast cancer cells five years in advance. What are the doctors saying about this? You're in touch with all the doctors. Are they happy to have this I, additional I, work? I, I think they're more than happy. They're thrilled. But you asked before, what do we do to train our people? We have to get more women and minorities to take up STEM education when they're in high school so that they're trained in coding, so that they know the new jobs. The new jobs pay a lot more money than the jobs that they than they would get without having a college. I, I, I know right now MIT, IBM, and PwC have all come out with uh, reports on the future of work, mm -hmm. trying to explain to people what they need to do in terms of arming themselves with the right information to thrive in this new, in this new AI world. It, it is life-changing, isn't it? Yeah, and, and conventional wisdom gets it wrong from time to time. You know, there's always, there's always people out there who make a living scaring folks. Uh, you know, whether it's on the climate or whatever, you know, it's on AI, whatever it is, or people who may not be particularly armed with good information, but the future is exciting to me. Mm. AI is one of the opportunities that, that we have to be able to do things with our computers to be able to save our children's lives or to make their lives better. I mean, for me, that is incredibly exciting. And the Department of Energy, Sandy Wiles Foundation, by the way, I just want to say something about this guy. Yeah. Uh, he, he, is, he is a great partner. Uh, I think some $60 million he and or his family foundation have given to pay off the debts of young men and women who are going into uh, medical practices. My friend Robert Smith uh, gave a huge amount of money to Morehouse College. And uh, the, these are the types of, yeah. of people who, because America, and because America is this incredibly great and opportunistic place, uh, these are the things that we're all working together on. And he's been doing it for a lifetime. The future is good because of that. Sandy, thank you, man. You know, I, thank you. Thank you. And I, I, I think we have to become a leader in this yeah. because the 
the country that has the best computers and the best scientists will be the country that ends up being the leader in this world. And uh, Well, I think you make a really important point because I know that the president has earmarked a billion dollars for AI, first president to put it actually in the budget. I, I get that, but China is spending much more. So compare mm -hmm. where we are on AI to where China is, and China is using it in different ways, like, for example, tracking their citizens. Um, Facial recognition is debatable. Who do you want to get to quantum computing first? Right. I'll suggest that it needs to be the United States for a lot of reasons. Y you want a democracy to, to be getting it. You, you don't want the, the leading superpower of the world, by the way, being a communist country. Uh, but that's what is what the conversation we're having that's today. That's the stakes. But we yeah. have to improve our whole education system to make this work. We've got to have everybody being a participant in the economy of the future and not be taught about the economy of the past. It goes back to education. Correct. Yeah, and, and again, conventional wisdom has gotten it wrong so many times. Yeah. In 2005, they told us we'd found all the oil and gas resources that were. That's a bit of a change. Well, we're in a different moment right now. While Indeed. I have you, let me ask you about this Saudi-Iran uh, conflict. European leaders are now joining the United States, we think, uh, in terms of blaming Iran for the Saudi oil attacks. This coming as world leaders are convening here in New York at the U.N. General Assembly. Secretary, your reaction to what took place on the Saudi oil fields and uh, the U.S. is, I guess, better equipped today than it has been in a long time. Well, maybe ever. And uh, the key here is that, uh, yes, we saw a bump up in the cost of, of uh, crude. Uh, I think, uh, you know, West Texas Intermediate today is about $58 a barrel. Uh, but had this happened a decade ago, we would have gone through $100 uh, in just a few days. America's ability to fill the gap here, America producers, uh, should give our country and our allies great uh, good feelings of confidence that America can fill in the needed uh, supplies of, of this. And at the same time, uh, we're making some great progress in, in other areas of energy, nuclear energy, for instance. We happen to think that uh, uh, the small modular reactors, uh, some uh, you know, zero emission types of, uh, of, of energy. Uh, under the president, we've seen a 90 percent increase in renewable energy in this country. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of great stories going on out there. The Iranians and individuals who don't want to live under the rules of, of um, common good decency. Mm. They need to be held accountable. And that's what this president's doing. Sandy, we haven't seen you in a while. What's your, what's your take on the economy right now? I know you're giving more money away these days than, mm -hmm. than, than taking any in. It's but more fun, by the way. It's more fun. You're having more fun than you ever have? I, I am. Tell I me am. What, you, what your reaction is as to sort of the, the economy today and, and what you're seeing out there. I think the economy is in very good shape. Uh, everybody knows the employment numbers, unemployment numbers are very, very low. I think we have to figure out a way to make this world a better place and have the U.S. and China get along better and understand each other better. So I, I think if we can resolve these issues, and we should be able to. Yeah. Uh, I think the economy, you'll see the economy really, really do very well. Well, you've worked hard your entire life. You've created an empire for yourself and you've given it away. But a major talking point of the Democratic Party right now in the primary is taxing the wealthy. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders looking to outdo Elizabeth Warren. His wealth tax is actually higher than Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax. It would apply to net worth above $32 million. It would raise an estimated $4.35 trillion over the next 10 years. What do you say to that, Sandy? I'm going to give my money away before they get, my, get, get it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to keep giving it all away. Good for you. But seriously, it is a very different uh, philosophy when you look at what you're hearing from the Democrats to what you're hearing from President Trump. Isn't yeah. that true? And listen, socialism doesn't work. It hadn't worked anywhere. President true. Uh, Trump is going to be a very loud and proud supporter of capitalism. And we'll let the other side defend socialism. Yesterday I was at a meeting and actually I was told that income inequality is actually going down right now. Do you have any confirmation of that? Are you seeing it, the income inequality tightening at all at this point? Because I was told by somebody in the Trump administration that it's actually gone down. Well, wages are going up. I mean, so, so that's helping the very low end of the scale. 
and that, that's going up faster than inflation now, so and that's, that's a good of, thing. That's one of the key reasons. It is great to talk with you both. Sandy Wild, good to see you. Thank you. Rick Perry, Energy Secretary, Thank great you, to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks for all of uh, He's what He's a great man. Uh, what, uh, great to see the partnership. A good partner, brother.